All right, so in today's tutorial, we're gonna be tackling this modern home design. We're not gonna get really technical or really exact with our modeling. This is gonna be a beginner tutorial just to get you comfortable with playing around with vertices and moving faces and things like that. So we're not gonna get really exact with our measurements, but we are going to get this design here, all the materials, background, the water, everything. And it's super simple, so let's do it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is get that first level knocked out. So we're gonna get a cube. Now, right now, the anchor point, see that little dot right there? That's the anchor point. So if I were to hit R, it rotates on that axis. So we want to put the anchor point right here at the actual bottom. So I'm going to hit Tab, and then click this little icon here. Hold down Control, and then go snap it to the bottom, and there you go. Now, if I hit R, it rotates on that axis. And the reason why we want to do that is when we're scaling it and stretching it, it won't scale both ways, it just scales up. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to click the scale tool and we're just going to stretch it out maybe probably to right about there and now let's hit let's hit control d to duplicate it and we're just going to bring it up right here and then hit tab right up here go to face select and we're just going to take this one and stretch it out we're going to stretch it out this way Save to right about there. So now we have this. Now let's make that centerpiece. So we're just going to take this right here, Control D, go to our scale here, and we're going to scale it down. It doesn't have to be super exact. It just has to be around the ballpark of what we're looking for. Because again, this isn't a really precise, super professional tutorial. We're just trying to get the look and trying to get comfortable with playing around with these techniques, we can get exact later on. So now we have this, let's take it and we will scale it up this direction, just like that. And now we have it, we have the centerpiece. Let's just quickly hit tab. All right, now keep in mind, every time you change something, you, you have to apply scale because when you add modifiers and different things, It'll make it wonky, so you want to hit Control A, apply scale, Control A, scale. Apply scale to every time you change these big pieces. So for this one, we're going to hit Tab. We're going to click this front face, and right over here, we're going to click Inset Faces, and then we're just going to use our mouse, scale it in like that, and then click the Move tool and just bring it in like that. And now we have that centerpiece. All right, let's take this one here really quickly. Hit tab. On the design, there's two different sides. This one has a window, this one doesn't. So we're just gonna take this one over here, bring it right here to the edge. And right there, there we go. And let's just take it, Control D. And we're gonna duplicate it, bring it over here. And now we have those two sides and this one's gonna be the window. This one's gonna be just regular asphalt. All right, and then again, Control A, apply scale apply scale just like that and then also apply scale all right let's do that thing over here on the side so let's go ahead and add a plane so r y 90 and then we're going to bring it over here bring it up i'm just going to bring it right about there this is more of a style thing it has no real practical use but more just to be artistic with our architecture Sometimes things don't have to make sense. They just add to the aesthetic of the building. Now let's add, let's add a solidify modifier and then just click it. Now we have that side piece. I want to make it bigger. So bring it out just like that. looks really good. And then let's add those pillars on the bottom. So let's add a cylinder where I'm going to give it a hundred. Faces, right click, shade smooth, and we're gonna bring it over here and make it really small, kind of like that. And then we are going to scale it up and then make it smaller. And that looks right about the right size we want. And now let's add an array modifier. First, control A, apply scale. Let's add our array modifier. So it looks like it's going out that direction. So zero that out. 
and right here in the middle one looks like, at least for me, it's the middle one. And let's duplicate those pillars until they fit. All right, one more click. All right, perfect, now we have that. Let's go ahead and add our floor. So we're gonna scale that up to right about there. And we have our ground. We're gonna add a solidify modifier to that as well. And we're gonna make that one go negative on the size. I think right about there looks good. Now, now it's intersecting with the bottom here. So what we just do is hit B for box select and select everything that's above this plane. And then just bring it above it right about there. That looks good. So now we have the ground. Now let's make those that window. So we're just gonna take this one, hit tab, make sure that a scale is applied to this. Now select this face, hold shift, select that face. And we're gonna go back to inset faces and we're gonna make our window. So we're gonna bring it in like that. And then another one right here, extrude region. We're gonna take this plus sign and we're gonna bring it in. And now we have this here. Again, doing that extrude region part, we have a little problem here on the sides, but the, again, this is just a beginner tutorial. You would go in and fix that. Um, but we're gonna, at the end of the day, we do still have the look, we still have the design, and you can go back and make really specific changes. But overall, it's not a big deal. We still have the design going. So now we're gonna take this, we're gonna hit, we're gonna go to edit, operator search, and type in separate. So right here, mesh separate, and we're gonna click selection. And so now that thing that we had selected is now a separate object. So when we go hit A and subdivide it once, we have our windows, we're gonna add a wireframe modifier to that. So now we have the window and apply scale to both of these. Hit tab, we're gonna click this, select this front face, also click separate separate selection because this is also going to be another window. So let's go ahead and subdivide it. Let's do it, subdivide it twice. So now we have these windows right here. Of course, the wireframe is going to make that window. So overall, we kind of have the design. Now let's go ahead to lighting and shading. So we have some water going on here. So we're gonna have that hit S8. I think it's actually gonna be quite a bit bigger than that. So now we have our design. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. I'm gonna use cycles to render this, but we're gonna be using EV. We're gonna be using EV to preview everything. So you hit Z and click look dev. So now you have this going on here. Let's go ahead and make the water super, super easy. We're going to add a new material. We're gonna bring the roughness all the way down and bring the trans transmission all the way up. So now we have this. Let's go over to our shader tab here in Blender and hit Z, look dev. Let's go ahead and add a bump node here in this. So bump, plug that into the normal and then a noise texture, plug the noise texture into the height of the bump node. And now we have our water. Let's go ahead and bring the detail about like that. And then you can bring the strength down to decrease the height of the water. So I think I think that looks about pretty good. So that's our water. It's super, super easy, really fun to play with. And if we were to add a, all right, forget that. All right, so now we have some nice water. Let's go ahead and make some asphalt. So new, click new. We're gonna go ahead and add a color ramp because we're gonna add a noise texture to the color ramp and we, we wanna be able to color the noise. So let's add a noise texture to the color ramp, just like this. Plug that in right there. And we already have some stuff going on. It's too contrasty, but we're gonna fix that later. Take the detail all the way up. And then now let's add a mapping node right here. Plug the vector into the vector and a texture coordinate. And the reason why we're adding these things is because we're gonna add this shader to multiple things. And we're gonna be using this object coordinate so that everything is evenly displaced on each object. So now let's go back and color this. So first I don't like how, um, I don't like the scale of the noise. So we're gonna take the scale and we're gonna bring it pretty big. I think right about there looks good. 
and then take the black and bring it more toward the gray, just a subtle difference. And let's add a bump node. We're going to add some detail in in here. So let's take this noise texture, texture, plug into the height. So now we have all this. It's way too much, but we can take this strength right here and just bring it down just barely so we have some little bit of texture, but not too much. I think we can bring the strength down just a little bit more. Just start, starts playing with the light. All right, perfect. Now we have our asphalt. We can start applying that to other things like this. So just click on this one here and here in the drop down, add the new material. We have asphalt now. We're going to take this one here and just a simple, fairly dark shader, kind of like that to add some contrast within these two brighter materials and also add that asphalt to I'm calling it asphalt. It's more cement or something around those lines. I don't want to call it something it's not, but yeah, you get the, the idea. So now we have these things going on. Let's go ahead and add another special shader here. So go back to the shader editor and to add some more variation in our shading, we're going to click new, make this metallic and we're going to make it a little bit darker here and slightly more toward the red kind of like that and we're gonna add a wave texture to a bump node so take the wave add a bump node plug the normal into the normal the wave into the height and now now the wave is going the wrong direction I want it to go I want it to go this way so we're gonna add a texture coordinate and a mapping node so same thing if you're ever trying to take textures and move them around, it's texture coordinate and a mapping node. And we're going to use the object coordinate here. It's always it's always good to use the object coordinate, but sometimes it's not necessary. So now that we have this, the wave, we can take the rotation. I think it's on the Y. Yeah, we can take the we can take the X rotation here and just flatten out our wave here. Just sort of eyeball it. And now we have this going on, and you can change the scale now to however big you want it to be. There we go. And now we have a little bit of color variation going on within our look. And let's just add a simple metallic shader to these bars. Make it a little bit darker. And now we have all this going on. Now let's take this. Let's add a wireframe to it. We have the wireframe. Unclick replace original so we have this and now let's add our two materials so let's get the first one which is the glass so we're gonna take the transmission here bring it all the way up bring your roughness all the way down just like that and we need to add one more material which will be assigned to those plus sort of cross things on top of the window I forget what they're called and we'll just make those metallic and keep them right about this color here now to actually activate them being assigned to that Let's go back to the wireframe on material offset, offset of two. So now we have, it's picking the second material. That's what offset means. If you have like 10 materials and you want the ninth one to be picked, you would click material offset of nine. So now we have those windows just like that. You can play with the thickness here. Let's do the exact same thing to this. We're going to do the same thing to this. So add the wireframe up the thickness a little bit. And now we have our glass and we're pretty much done texturing and shading everything. Let's go ahead and add our background. If you notice, if you notice there's a background here and that's not made in blender. That's just simply a background image. So let's go ahead and grab one. Let's go ahead and grab one. So let's go over to unsplash. Everything on unsplash is free, royalty free, all that. So I'm just going to take, I'm going to type in sky just like that. And we can go ahead and just pick any one we want. I would recommend using pictures like this where the ground is also in the picture so you can line the horizon with everything you're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick this image right here and click download. All right, now if you're in Blender 2.8, it has this feature called image. You can go and click images as planes. And if that's not activated, you would just go up here to edit preferences, go to your add-ons here and type in images, planes, and activate it. 
So, but mine's already activated. So images planes, go ahead and go to where you saved it. So we're gonna hit Glenn here, but before you import it, right down here, click emit. So it emits some light so that other light doesn't actually affect it. And then click that. And so now I'm gonna hit RX90. And let's see what it looks like. Cool. So let's bring it back here, right about there, and scale it up. Now let's go ahead and pick my camera composition so I can set this up. So Shift A, add your camera. So position your view to however you want it to be. I want it to be right about here. So I'm gonna hit Control Alt Zero, snaps the camera to view, and then I'm gonna bring it back a little bit. I'm also going to widen my lens just a little bit here. All right, that looks about right. All right, so we're going to hit the rotate tool here on the blue one. We're just going to rotate it till it points at us. Right. Right about there. You can also go to the transform settings and do this, but I like to do it by hand. And then just position it like that. And I'm going to hit scale it all the way up. And let's just position it to correct our horizon. So now we have this. And if you want to check it out in cycles, just click cycles and you can see it's reflecting in the water just fine, but there's no light actually affecting this. So we're going to use another asset called HDRI Haven. And it's really cool, all royalty free, really high quality HDRIs for our lighting. So I'm going to click skies here and pick something that's similar to the sky we have in our background. So just slightly cloudy, very bright outside. And that looks like probably this one. So we're gonna click that one and right here, download the 4K version. So now let's go over to our world settings here. Click the little red earth, click color, environment texture, and then navigate and open where you saved your HDRI. All right, now that it's entered, you can go to your cycles render and check out the render. I'm gonna actually increase the brightness by one. And now we have a nice render, super, super noisy. You are totally free to actually use Eevee in this. I personally think the Cycles render looks better just in terms of shadows and light, things like that, but the Eevee render works just fine if your computer can't handle a Cycles render. Render's just great. I would actually bring the brightness down for the Eevee render, but at the end of the day, of course, it's completely up to you. So there you go, you made a simple render. For those of you actually using cycles, I would render this at about 300 to 500 samples. And on denoising, keep the denoise settings here at the default. And then you would go up to render, render image, and you have it. So there you go, you made a simple house. Thanks for watching.